You're listening to episode number 22 of the Keto Diet Podcast. Hey, I'm Leanne from healthfulpursuit.com, and this is the Keto Diet Podcast, where we're busting through the restrictive mentality of a traditional ketogenic diet to uncover the life you crave. What's keto? Keto is a low carb, high fat diet where we're switching from a sugar burning state to becoming fat burning machines. If you're in need of keto recipe food prep inspiration, I've prepped a free seven day keto meal plan exclusive for podcast listeners. The plan is complete with a shopping list and everything you need to chow down on keto for seven whole days. Download your free copy at healthfulpursuit.com forward slash keto meal. Let's get this party started. Hey guys, happy Sunday. Always thrilled to be hanging out with you, chilling and relaxing on a Sunday morning. Maybe you're like many of the others and downloading this on a Monday morning, in which case, happy Monday. I hope you have a wonderful week ahead of you. I have one awesome thing to share with you this week. It's something I've been obsessed with for a couple of months, and it's right about time that I share it with you. I've been cooking sausages in the morning, like the little breakfast sausages that are like gluten-free and sugar-free and all the things, and I cook them up, and then I wrap them in cooked ham or bacon, and I then cut them in half and sandwich them in between a cucumber that usually has avocado. So they're like little baby sandwiches of sausages that are wrapped in bacon or cooked ham and sandwiched with cucumber and sometimes I add avocado or if I want to be really crazy and I have time on my hands I will marinate some cucumbers in like olive oil and some vinegar so they get like really flavorful and I'll use that as the sandwiches and that's been my breakfast for quite a long time now that I just had to share it with you. In today's episode we are going to be chatting about dealing with fears as you adjust to a keto diet especially as it relates to people that are training and if they're worried about their performance. The effect that keto has on athletic performance, the signs of overtraining and what happens to keto during a carb up when you're using those carb ups for your workouts and all of the good stuff. The show notes for today's episode can be found at healthfulpursuit.com forward slash podcast forward slash E22. And let's hear from one of our awesome partners. The podcast is partnered with Vital Proteins, my favorite collagen brand of all time. I use their collagen peptides in my daily Rocket Fuel Latte to add body-loving protein to my cup without changing the taste or making the mixture chalky, like regular protein powders can do. And their gelatin, I add a couple of scoops to warm dishes like spaghetti sauce, gravy, soups, or stews, and nobody can even tell the difference. And when I'm out on the go, I always have a couple of their stick packs hidden away in my purse so that I can add them to my coffees or teas when I'm out and about. Vital Protein's collagen peptides are sourced from grass-fed, pasture-raised bovine hides to ensure a natural, high-quality, and sustainable source of this ancient nutrient. Collagen is the most abundant protein in the body, ensuring the health and vitality of our skin, hair, tendon, cartilage, bones, and joints. Vital Proteins and I are working on a brand new offer for all of you, but in the meantime, the coupon code VPHP10, that's VPHP10, is up and running and there to give you 10% off plus free shipping. Now the free shipping is just US based, but everyone can benefit from the 10% off on all of your favorite Vital Protein products over at vitalproteins.com. So I have one announcement. I will be headed down to California for a couple of days. My sister's going to be with me again for Expo West. This is our third annual visit to Expo West. Pretty excited about it. We always enjoy ourselves. We get to chat with some really cool companies, some of my favorites. All of our partners are there. So it's always a good time. So if you are headed to Expo West and you want to get together and hang out at the show, say hi. I would love to see you there. Just message me on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook and I would love to watch for you. And I would love to hang out with you. And if you have an awesome idea for a podcast episode and want to submit praise over and above your review, which you can leave by going to healthfulpursuit.com forward slash review, you can reach me at 
info at ketodietpodcast.com. Today we have a wonderful guest sharing her keto experience and how she adjusts keto to work for her training schedule, which is quite impressive. So our guest today is Tammy and she's 56 years old. She's married for 36 years. In fact, her anniversary is today and has four amazing grown children and six sweet grandchildren. She's a 14 year kidney cancer survivor and has one kidney. Tammy is a lifelong recreational athlete and she played softball and volleyball in high school, played basketball and softball in college. She swims, runs, bikes, plays golf and pickleball, which is quite an interesting sport. I highly recommend you check it out because it's awesome and practices Pilates and yoga on a weekly basis. She began her high fat, low carb diet in June, 2016 on her functional medicine doctor's recommendation to help heal the high inflammation in her body that was negatively impacting her lungs, kidney, and to help her leaky gut. So without further ado, let's cut over to the interview. Hey, Tammy, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Awesome. Thanks so much for being on the podcast. For those listening that may not be familiar with you and your story, why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm 56 years old. I'm married. Today is actually my 36th anniversary. Happy anniversary. That's great. And I have four grown children. I have six grandchildren. And, you know, I'm a very active person. I work part-time. I've gone down from full-time to part-time. And I work every afternoon. And I work out just about every morning. And that's pretty much my life right now. That's amazing. And how did you find keto? What's the story behind that? Well, you know, I have a significant health history in that I'm a kidney cancer survivor. So about 14 years ago, they diagnosed me with kidney cancer and I had my kidney removed and that's been a long journey. And through the course of that, other health issues have come along and I just wasn't satisfied with my conventional medicine doctor. Just wasn't getting a lot of answers. I was having a lot of symptoms. Um, My asthma really flared up really bad Mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. I was just having all kinds of female issues, lung issues, gut issues, And all anybody wanted to do was just put me on medicine. And it just didn't seem like anything was helping. So I started researching functional medicine doctors and decided to make a switch. And so that was in June. And there was a whole history of some events that led up to that switch. But it was really important for me to make a change because my kidney wasn't functioning fully And there were just some issues that came up and my conventional doctor just wasn't dealing with them well. So I found this awesome functional medicine doctor and he chatted with me for about two hours in our first visit. And he just listened and it was such a different experience for me. And he just, he looked at me after he heard everything about lungs and my kidney and my gut. And he's just like, your body is full of inflammation. It's like if we can just get rid of your inflammation, so many of your symptoms will go away and I guarantee your kidney will begin to function better, you'll breathe better, your gut will heal. And so he is the one who introduced me into the keto lifestyle and the keto way of eating. And that's the way he lives. That's the way, and he's an athlete. And so he understood my concerns about my kidney and eating this way and how it would impact me. So that's kind of how I got into it was my health drove me there. And my doctor lives that way and eats that way. So that's, that's how I got connected to keto. How did it feel when he was like, there's this keto thing, you should give it a try. Like, what was your eating before then? And and did you have like, I know for myself, I was like, how am I going to not eat carbs? Like, that's crazy to me. <laughs> like, yeah. And so that goes into my athletic training. I train with an awesome coach and she's an Ironman certified coach. I am not an Ironman. My longest distance that I've done for triathlons has been sprint, but I do a lot of them and... Anyway, so I do train with an Ironman certified coach and everything is geared around carbohydrates and being a sugar burner. And so when he started talking about analyzing everything, my training plan and my nutrition plan, and he started looking all that and he was like, wow, way too many carbs. We got to get you off of that. And you can be 
a fat burning athlete. And I was like, no way. There's just no way you can do that. Because I was eating really high carb, low fat. That's, that was just the way I was trained to eat. And, you know, my weight had ballooned. And even though I was running and swimming and biking all these hours, and my weight wasn't going anywhere. And so it was just fascinating. I was a little skeptical at first that this would work. But he just, he made me promise to, to try it, to try it at least for 30 days and, and then get back to him and see how I was feeling. What was that 30 days like? You know, the 30 days was, I thought, okay, this is going to be really hard, but it wasn't. Oh, and the other issue that came up too was I did all those food tests to analyze about my gut. And I came up with about 16 different things that were off the chart for me being sensitive to and causing issues. So not only was it jumping into keto, but it was also eliminating things from my diet that were causing me incredibly gut issues. So I was highly motivated on that issue because I wanted to get my gut better. And so that was an easy part for me. And so the high fat just resonated with me. I would say by day two, my gut issues were gone. Like they, I, my stomach didn't hurt anymore. And I wasn't in the bathroom for hours. And I was, it was just amazing. And high fat just really res, I was like, I'm eating fewer calories, but I'm so satisfied. So it was pretty amazing. I, w- I was a believer, like, I think by day three. Wow, that's quick. What was the experience like with while you were adapting and training? Did you find that it took your body a little bit? Like, did your uh, performance go down at all while your body was adapting? Yeah, you know, that was very interesting because, you know, I started, he gave me books to read. He wanted me to read, you know, Finney and Volokh's The Art and Science of low carbohydrate performance and low carbohydrate living. And so that's kind of where I had started. I also had read a book called Smart Fat. And so a a lot of this had to do with athletes and, and being a low carb athlete. And it was, at first I just thought, okay, everyone says you need to just take it easy, not really push yourself at least for the first couple of weeks. And that's what my um, doctor had told me. So luckily when I was starting, this was off season for me. I wasn't training for anything. I was just recovering from a hysterectomy. So it was easy for me to be dialed back in my activity because that was just natural. Mm -hmm. So when I was able to, it was about two weeks into keto, it just hit me. Wow, I am totally, I, I could go ride 50 miles on my bike and I, I would have total energy to do that. Mm-hmm. But the first couple of weeks, it was a little sluggish. It was, yeah, I'm just not going to push myself today. I'm going to go ride, but I'm just not going to worry about my heart rate. I'm going to go run, but I'm just not going to worry about it. And so there was definitely a little bit of a lull the first two weeks. But then for me, it was after that, the lights kicked on and man, I had total energy. That's so cool. That's so good. And did you do like, it sounds like you had quite a few imbalances and frustrations with your health. Did you do any blood work before and after? Did you go through that with your doctor at all? Yeah, I did a lot of blood work because they were really concerned because in my conventional medicine doctor had continually, you know, been tracking me because I had to do all these things for being a kidney cancer survivor. So Mm -hmm. for my yearly checks and had been telling me for zero for a zillion years that my kidney was functioning fully and then when I went to do my hysterectomy the anesthesiologist almost refused to do the procedure because my kidney wasn't functioning fully Mm. so it was kind of a shock and so I had to do a lot of blood work as I began keto because one they wanted to check to see what my kidney was doing because that's my goal and that's my doctor's goal His goal was, you know, we're going to reduce your inflammation. We're going to get your kidney healthy because that's going to that help you live longer and fuller. And weight loss may happen. Muscle gain may happen. But that's not the goal. The goal is we're going to get your kidney healthy. Mm -hmm. And so I did a lot of before and after. And my kidney continued to improve like every two months that I've been into keto, it's just my, my kidney functions just improving. And so that shows that the inflammation is decreasing. 
That's so good and so glad to hear and and really scary too that, I mean, although it took you getting that surgery and and that anesthesiologist kind of saying, hey, you know, maybe it's not as good as you think, even though that was probably pretty scary at the moment, pretty great that you were able to know that. (laughs) Yeah, I I was was amazed that I was able, I I just was, it was pretty shocking. I went and had a conversation with my conventional doctor before I switched and she goes, you know, I just don't understand the issue. That's been your number for five years. Mm. And it seems like it's in the normal range. But according to other doctors, that wasn't the normal range for me. It should have been double that. Wow. Yeah. So, and all of these things that I was doing, overtraining, not eating the right foods, they put me on gut medicine that can cause long-term kidney failure. <laughs> you know, they they did all these things conventional medicine wise that really were doing nothing to help me. So I am so thankful that I got connected to a doctor who got me on the keto pathway. But you know, Leanne, as I got on that journey, it was about a month into it, mm-hmm. I just started thinking, you know what, all these books I'm reading are all about male athletes. Mm-hmm. Where's the female voice in this keto journey? And I just Googled I think female keto and I, I found you. (laughs) And so I know I was just like, this is it. This is it for me. I started reading your books and things started clicking more. And my doctor had said, you know, be prepared. Some women have a hard time maintaining a ketogenic eating style for very long. Mm. And I just didn't understand what he meant by that. But after I got into it and started getting familiar with other women on the Facebook page, I could understand that because we have different needs than men do. Yeah, much different. And the conversation is totally different. That was my experience too. My first keto book was from Jimmy Moore and I was like, yes, I can do this. I can totally do this. And I pushed myself so hard for so many months until I was like, wait a minute, I can't do this. (laughs) Like, So (laughs) it sounds like at first you were totally in with the keto thing. You know, you said the first three days you were like, yes, this is it. How has keto changed for you from, you know, June, 2016 to now? How is it been adjusted? How have you, you know, trickled around with things to make it work for you? Yeah. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a numbers wonky kind of person. I love to crunch numbers. I love to track. I love to test. I love to do all those things. So when I first read fat fueled, I was like, yeah, no, I, I I just can't throw away my fitness pal. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I think that's one of your sentences in there. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, 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 I can't, I can't do that. I'm not ready yet. So, you know, I tracked for probably at least a good three, three months, maybe closer to four, because I had just been doing the different, you know, the high carb thing for, I just needed to know really what, what I was putting into my body. And so that kind of gave me a little bit of comfort is to like, oh yeah, I'm eating pretty much the same level of macros every day, different foods, but it's all coming out numbers wise the same. And testing is like, oh, okay, so that, you know, might have raised my, my glucose a little bit, but it's back down and, and keto, my numbers for being in ketosis were, are right on. So I just needed that to reassure me, I think, that mm-hmm. everything was going well. And then I had a, um, another round of blood work and another DEXA scan in, about four months into keto. And at the four-month point, I had lost... 10 and a half pounds of fat, and I had gained two and a half pounds of muscle. And I, you know, I was feeling great. I was very comfortable, I think, in what I was doing. So I decided, all right, I'm not going to track my macros anymore. I'm just going to eat. And I started journaling how the food made me feel more than my numbers for the day. So that was a huge change. And I began to I got to be very comfortable doing that. And I really love that now because I am, I'm not tracking macros as much anymore. But I found that I struggled, Leanne, with, um, you know, when I, when I don't pay attention sometimes, like I don't eat because I'm mm-hmm. not hungry. And then I, I add up my calories. It's like, oh my gosh, I've only had 800 calories today. And it's kind of a freak out because, oh wow, that's starvation mode. I can't go there. And so I'm still... In that I'm adjusting to trusting my body that 
on the days that I'm hungry, I do eat more. And the days that I'm not hungry, I do eat less. And some days I eat a lot more fat. Sometimes I have most of my fat calories before noon mm. because I just want them. And so it's, I'm not as rigid at my seven, eighth month point right now. I'm not as rigid and I'm, I'm more comfortable in just listening to my body. And I have to thank you for that because I never would have done that <laughs> ever. That's so great. That makes my heart so, so happy because I remember, especially with fat fueled as I was writing, I'm like, I, are people just going to laugh at me? Like, I don't know. Are people even going to like pay attention to this? Are they going to think I'm crazy? So that makes me really happy that you got the message, even if it's just one person who read the book and was like, <laughs> okay, I can totally do this. That makes me so happy because it's so much more freeing. It is, but you know, it's scary at mm -hmm. first for a person who wants to fit in that box of, okay, this is my, these are my limits. And this is going to keep me on, you know, and because I've gotten, you know, so used to not trusting my body and to restricting. And I mean, that was my life for years. And so this is a new journey for me. But journaling to me has really been helpful. And I love the journal things that you had, kind of exercises you had in Fat Fueled. That really helped me a lot. And, you know, I still go back to those and still journal that way because I just want to get this ingrained so it just becomes more natural. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it, I do have freak, eight, freak out days, especially if I've worked out a lot and I'm hungry mm -hmm. and I think, okay, I, I start counting, okay, how many fat calories have I had today? And it's like, just relax. If your body wants fat, eat it. <laughs> totally. I mean, it sounds so simple. Like when you're hungry, just eat, but it's not. <laughs> like, it's, not. it's not. Oh my gosh, it's not. Yeah. More on my interview with Tammy after this message from one of our podcast partners. My friends at Manitoba Harvest are now partners of the podcast. Manitoba Harvest, the hemp-based food company, has just added a new product to their already amazing line of scrumptious, naturally low-carb hemp products, toasted hemp seeds. They are whole hemp seeds, lightly toasted and seasoned with either sriracha seasoning or sea salt. They're crunchy super snacks, perfect right from the bag. Each third cup serving is two grams of net carbs and 18 grams of fat. I enjoy bringing a baggie along with me to the movies or sprinkling a handful on salads. With 13 grams of omegas in each serving, you really can't go wrong. Get 15% off your Canadian or US-based Manitoba Harvest order by going to healthfulpursuit.com forward slash hemp and using the coupon code HPTOASTED. That's H-P-T-O-A-S-T-E-D for 15% off, valid until March 31st, 2017. I know you're gonna love them. So how did, okay, so it sounds like you completely changed your attitude around feeding yourself. How has that, or has that same attitude of, when I'm hungry, I'll eat. Don't worry about the fat calories. Just eat fat when you need fat. How is that translated over to your training? Because you mentioned overtraining and the fact that maybe you were overtraining before. How has that affected it? Yeah, anything? so two things happened. When I got my blood work back in November and, and I, when I got my DEXA scan back, it showed that when we did the DEXA scan in June, I didn't do the bone density part of it. And in November, I did. So it showed that I have osteopenia and also that my cortisol was higher than they wanted. Mm -hmm. So my doctor, you know, had to have the talk with me about dialing back intensity because my thing is I'm not under stress. If you're, if that cortisol test happened to come back high, I never would have known it because I sleep like a baby. I just don't have those symptoms of adrenal fatigue or just being super stressed. And my doctor politely explained to me that stress can be, you know, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. And when I work out, when I push through, when I, you know, try to exert myself over and above what I should, your body doesn't know that you're having that kind of stress response from that versus being upset at work or having an emotional day. It's all the same kind of response. And so... His concern was that I was putting myself into this stress mode from my workouts mm -hmm. and that I need to dial that back 
and that I need to, especially with the osteopenia, because cortisol leaches the calcium from our bones. So that has been a big change for me in that I am dialing back my intensity. I've read Primal Endurance, and I'm going to be trying to work at a lower heart rate and going into this training season. And so that is a big change that has happened for me since November. And as far as my keto diet goes, I used to try, and if I would, they call it brick, if I was going to swim and bike or bike and run or swim and run, I would try and eat like a handful of grapes or two in between those two activities just to refuel me. But then I started to like, why am I doing that? Because I don't, I haven't even tested if I need to refuel. Mm. And so I quit. I quit doing the grape thing in between. And I have total energy. I don't, I'm finding that I don't need to refuel in between activities. And when I go from lifting weights to pickleball or pickleball to golf or, or you know, swim, bike, and maybe a run in there too, I'm, I'm finding I have the energy level. But what I do is afterwards, I'm really hungry. And so mm-hmm. I eat after I work out. And I work out in the morning. So usually my first big meal of the day is before I go to work. So it's around between 11 and 12. What do you eat after your workout? You know, I, um, it's high fat and it's veggies, a meat, and some plenty of good healthy fat. So, you know, yesterday I was really hungry for, I had this organic, um, nitrate-free, sugar-free breakfast sausage that I'm kind of like in love with. Mm -hmm. And so I just cooked that and I had a huge spinach salad and I threw in some coconut oil on that. And so that was my, that was my lunch and it carried me through till about eight o'clock that night. That's so amazing. I basically had the exact same thing for breakfast this morning. (laughs) (laughs) I've been wrapping sausage in ham and then cooking it. (laughs) <laughs> and then like sandwiching it in between cucumbers and putting spinach to it with it. And it's like the best. So, Oh my gosh, that sounds love great. It. <laughs> love it. And so what's you, what does your training schedule look like now? Because you're saying you're, you dialed things back a little bit because it sounds like you were overtraining a bit. What does your overall like schedule look like? You know, for, for me, it's I'm going to start training for an actual race in March Mm -hmm. and it'll be a 16 week training. So right now our coach has us on focus months. So January is a swim focus month and March will be a bike focus month and March will be a run focus month. So when we're kind of in off season, we're not expected to do our nine to 11 swim bike runs during a week. We dial that back, but I'll get in like four swims this week, like this morning I went, I walked two miles at my Maffetone number, um, lower heart rate, and then I went and I swam about 1,200, so not quite a mile, and at a very low heart rate. And so that was my workout today. Tomorrow I'll lift weights and I'll do pickleball. So I lift weights about three times a week with my Ironman coach, and I play pickleball a couple times a week. I do yoga one to twice, once to twice a week. I do Pilates once a week. And then I add in my, my, like my swims this week. And I'll, you know, I'll do like a walk run. I'll do another walk run this week. So I'm not sure if that answers your question fully, but it changes, but there's a lot of activity in there each, each morning. Yeah, definitely. More on my interview with Tammy after this message from one of our podcast partners. The podcast is partnered with Wolf Clinic Royal Flora, my choice in soil-based probiotics. Soil-based probiotics are a fabulously effective approach to repopulating the gut. The soil-based organisms are cultured in declayed plant matter free from pesticides, chemicals, and toxins. Unlike conventional probiotics, which have a shortened shelf life, are vulnerable to stomach acid, weakened by processing methods, and less likely to reconstitute or colonize the GI tract to the level we need it, soil-based probiotics are alive and thriving, meaning they colonize along the entire GI tract, rapidly forming into the bacteria your body needs most as soon as it interacts with saliva. Soil-based probiotics from Wolf Clinic called Royal Flora is my choice in soil-based probiotic, and my gut has never felt less bloated. I'm not reacting to foods in the way that I used to, for example, spaghetti squash. 
I can eat it. No problem. It's great. U.S. and Canadian listeners receive 20% off when you order from healthfulpursuit.com forward slash gut. Use the coupon code gut, all in caps, no spaces, for the 20% discount to be applied to your order. So do you fast at all or how does that look like? Cause it sounds like the day that you went swimming and you were talking about grapes. Um, you just cut that out and your first meal was then at noon. So are you fasting while doing most of these activities or? Yes. You know, I do, I do fast. I do intermittent fasting. And so, but this morning I was hungry when I woke up. So I had my lovely breakfast sausage and spinach again for breakfast before yeah, I awesome. went and worked out. Usually I would have a rocket fuel latte and then just go do my workouts and be fine until lunchtime. But I do 24 hour fast also, but I have not been doing that on a regular basis since probably the beginning of January. I was fasting Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, a 24 hour fast. Mm -hmm. And so my first meal wouldn't be until the evening, but I'm not doing that so much now because I just want to make sure that my everybody's happy, my my cortisol's happy, my adrenals happy, my thyroid. I just want to make sure they're happy, and so I'm I'm only fasting on days when I have a light activity day, and like tonight I will carb up. I'll have like a half a sweet potato with my meal, because tomorrow's going to be a high activity day because I will lift heavy, and then I'll go play pickleball, and I might do yoga. So that's you know, three things that, that I feel like I need to have those carbs for. You're like the poster child for like everything you just said. That's amazing. <laughs> I, just, like, I was like, yes, yes, yes. That sounds absolutely perfect. Like way to listen to your body. And it's so different for different people. But the way that you explained it, it's so evident that you're really, really tuned in to what your body needs. And, you know, for example, you know, waking up and feeling hungry first thing and, you know, not setting the rule of, well, I fast during my workouts. That's what I do. And I don't care if I'm hungry. I'm just going to go to the gym, do what I need to do, and then I'll eat. But today you're like, hey, no, I'm hungry. I'm going to eat before I work out. That's really cool that your rules have a lot of flexibility, really. Well, you know, and, and you, I have to give you credit for that because I have never listened to my body ever, I don't think. Mm-hmm. I've always been fitting myself into someone else's box of what a diet should look like or what a training thing should look like. And I'm, I'm pretty much done with that. And, and maybe that's the beauty of being 56 mm-hmm. and, and, not, and I don't have to worry about what yeah. other people think about me anymore. But, but, you know, I, it's freeing to me that, that I, there's power in listening to your body because I'm, I'm hoping that that helps keep inflammation down, that I don't get injured in this training season. You know, there's just a lot of good things that come from listening to your body And another thing that my doctor has me doing, there's a program called Rest Wise, W-I-S-E, and I plug in my numbers, being a number person, Mm -hmm. it's heart rate and how you slept and what does your urine look like this morning and what's your appetite like. And this was produced by a bunch of smart people that were were training and, and observing Olympic athletes knowing that Olympic athletes train so hard for so long to go do this one event every four years or whatever. And if they get injured in the course of that, they may not get to compete again because in the four years after that, who knows, they may be too old or whatever. Mm. So this program was supposed to be able to predict with pretty good reliability injury. And so my doctor, they, they, they made it so that lay people can do it. And, and so my doctor said he used it for one of his half Ironmans he was training for. And he said it was the best race he ever did because you plug in these numbers and it tells you, you know what? You should rest today. You shouldn't train today. Mm-hmm. Your heart rate's too high. You're not, you didn't sleep well. You're off appetite. And so it, it helps you it, for people like me that are so used to, oh, it's swim, bike, day. I got to go do that no matter what. This just helps you to listen to your body again. And it gives you these graphs and it just shows you, you know, that you should listen to your body. And we don't do that as athletes. We're not, we just, we push through pain. We push through 
we push through and and I'm learning that that's kind of the worst thing we can do to ourselves. Yes, totally. And sometimes you have to learn the hard way. <laughs> um, so anyone listening who hasn't gotten to that point yet, maybe this is your sign <laughs> of like looking that up. And what's it called again? Rest wise? Yeah. R-E-S-T-W-I-S-E. And there's a fee to participate, you know, because they analyze all your data each day. And so you can sign up for a couple months, six months, whatever. Mm. And my doctor said, you know, after about three months of doing this, you're going to be so used to listening to your body. You're going to know. You're going to mm-hmm. wake up and say, oh, you know what? Nope, just doing yoga today. I- I'm not going to do my long run. I'll do my long run another day. Mm-hmm. And he says, that's, you know, that's the way this program works. You have to trust it. And when it says you should rest today, you need to rest today. You can't just say, no, I really feel okay <laughs> and go run your five miles. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, we've all done that. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, I love that. Yeah, I'll have to look it up. I've never heard of it before. But any yeah. program that says listen to your body, I'm totally down with that. <laughs> and it's really scientific. I mean, it's really yeah. wonky scientific. So oh, I, I like can't it. get into that. I like that yeah. you said it was developed by smart people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally going to use that more. <laughs> I really like that. So I know those listening, you mentioned just briefly that you had half a sweet potato as a carb up. I know like at least 70% of the ladies listening are like, yeah, but like what else? How else? Like, tell me what kind of things you eat in a carb up, how often you do it, how you know that it's what you need. Can you answer any of those questions? I can't, so my okay so I do receive your balanced meal plans oh cool. so those make my life so easy and while again while I don't follow them you know exactly I use those as a template and so like sometimes I'll have the lunches for dinner or for breakfast you know I just kind of play around with it but usually you have one to two carb ups built in to those meal plans and so like I have to talk a little bit about my husband Mm -hmm. because bless his heart. He's one of those wonderful people that he can eat anything he wants and he'll never put on a pound, Mm. but he's eating the keto lifestyle for his lunches and his dinners because I make those for him. And so he's been so happy. And the other, I think was last week we had jicama and apples in our, for our carb up dinner. And I forget what the meat was, but he so loved that meal. And so, you know, I use your creativity in the meal plan for, for what I should do in my carb ups. So you have a variety. Sometimes it's fruit. Sometimes it is a sweet potato. And I just kind of time it so that my carb up is going to be before a busy, active day. Hmm. And sometimes that's once a week and sometimes that's twice a week. And usually it's Friday night is our sushi night. And so I always have some sushi rice. And so I always count Friday night as a carb up, which is good because Saturday can be a very active day for me. Mm. So I usually do it once to twice a week. Oh, that's perfect. And we were talking about this before we started recording. Kevin and I just got back from vacation and on our vacations, Kevin decides that he's not going to follow any sort of eating plan. He's just going to eat whatever looks good to him. And so he lives on like hot dogs and fries for like (laughs) ever. And it's crazy. Like I don't even, it's crazy, but he's the same. Like he won't, his body won't change. He'll just eat it. And it's like never ending pit. He could eat eight hot dogs and It's insane. I can't even understand where it goes. But then the last couple of days of our vacation, he looked over at me and he's like, I'm really looking forward to having kale. And I was like, (laughs) what did you just say? (laughs) He's like, I just need some kale and some coconut oil. I'm like, yeah, yeah, all those hot dogs will do that to you. But (laughs) yeah, they really do enjoy it. And I'm so glad that you enjoy the plans. And we really just come up with those as I'm cooking and making food for myself. So all of it's really easy. And I'm I'm glad that you have that feedback as well with the different carb ups. And I think a lot of people get caught up in, okay, well, carb up, you know, I haven't can be really overwhelming. I know when I first started, I was like, great, I get to eat cupcakes every night. <laughs> and it's like, no, that actually won't make you feel very good. And especially when it comes to your training, do you find that certain types of carbs uh, have an impact on your training? Like I know when I was training, I felt not so good on grains like white rice or pat, like gluten-free pasta, but sweet potatoes worked really good, especially the purple ones and fruits like apples were really good. Do you find that there's certain carbs that make your body feel better? 
Yes, definitely. I have given up greens except for the occasional sushi rice yeah. that I do. And so that, but I, I don't, I don't do grains. And so to me, a sweet potato is awesome. Purple potatoes, I love those too. Those seem to resonate well and I feel great and energetic. I don't feel, you know, bloated and like my ketones don't bottom out because I, I have a purple potato. Another one, I blackberries seem to resonate well with me. Apples, not so much, you know, so I've, I'm really experimenting with what, what feels good in my body. And I'm really on a BlackBerry kick. And it's kind of weird because they're not in season right now. So they're totally expensive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I really want them. So, <laughs> but, you know, that is fascinating to me is that these different carbs, these more starchy carbs can impact us so differently. Mm. You know, and I, I just, I could eat jicama all day. I love it. And I never would have picked up one if it hadn't have been in one of your recipes. I think it was like a snack in yeah. one of the early meals that I had back in the summer. I'm like, okay, I'll go find this. <laughs> and it was like amazing. I love it. Yeah, see, I can't eat jicama in large quantities. Like I can have a little bit, but it doesn't resonate as well with me every time I make like a huge batch. I'm like, why did I eat all of those? So it's so cool, you know, just listening and saying, you know, apples work really good for me. And you're like, uh, apples don't really work good for me. So to, <laughs> to really know your body and listen to your body, that's so cool. You mentioned a little bit about ketones and we haven't even gotten there yet. Do you test your ketones? I do. Okay. And, you know, and I just kind of like, I almost feel like it's my little, okay, so I gave up my fitness pal, but I'm still going to test. That's fair. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> but maybe someday I'll give that up. And so I do test my glucose and I do test my ketones. I only test my ketone level probably once a day because those things are so expensive. But as a Christmas present to myself, I got the 2017 Ketonics Breath Ketone Meter. And so... <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun. It's like this little disco light show on this ketone breath meter. But I just, I'm, I'm going to start carrying that like in my gym bag because I'm really curious to what, what do my ketones, what are, what are my levels as I exercise and not. So it's going to be just something I'm going to play with and see. But I, I you know, I know I've read and, and even your podcasts from this past Sunday that we don't have to be in ketosis to burn fat. Mm -hmm. And I, and that kind of is scary to me. Because I thought, oh my gosh, I got to have a certain level or I'm not burning any fat. And so I'm going to have to like ponder that for a little bit. <laughs> right? I know. Totally. It, it takes you a while. And, and don't be worried like when you bring your ketonics to the gym, if you know you test your ketones and your glucose and your glucose seems to be higher during your workouts and your ketones have crashed, don't be worried. That's like a normal reaction. <laughs> <laughs> so don't be freaking out like, oh my gosh, you know, maybe it was this or that or the other thing. Um, that's something that happened to me. I brought uh, my ketonics. Mind you, this was like a, I think they were like the 2014 ones. So a lot different. I've heard the 2017 ones are awesome and pretty bang on. But the one I had was like the first version. It was giving me so many issues, but I was testing it right after workouts and my glucose was high and my ketones were non-existent. Um, <laughs> but if you wait like 30 minutes, an hour, the numbers totally change. So that's really cool that you're testing it and playing around, especially at the gym. What happens after a carb up or the day after a carb up to your ketones? You know, they're, they're right back in, in the level, you know, 0.5 and above, you know, sometimes they will be 1.1, sometimes they will be closer to two, sometimes they will be down. I think it, you know, and that's why I'm going to start watching it a little bit more with the type of carb up carb that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I want to play with. It's just kind of see which is having the biggest impact on my ketone level. But once I've listened to the podcast on Sunday, I'm like, okay, well maybe I need to give that up a little bit. But anyway, I still think it's, I'm curious totally. on what it does. Once you're keto adapted, like I don't remember what I said in the past episode because I probably yeah. recorded it a little while ago. Well, a while um, ago. <laughs> 
<laughs> but <Ow>. um, <laughs> right. But once you're adapted, I I did a talk uh, about a year ago um, with a group of people in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and I did this like little dance on the floor, and it was quite interesting because it was the first time I'd done it. But basically, what the little dance is is like a little triangle, and I go in between different states of fat burning. So the first one, or not even fat burning, but the first one would be glucose fueled. And when you're adapting, the the move over to the other side of the triangle is kind of like hard to do when you're trying to become fat adapted and you're like trying to get there and once you're there you kind of move over to the next piece of the triangle which is pretty easy to get to and that's like pure fat burning ketosis you're in it to win it and you can actually go in between all of these from that little point on the triangle you can move back and forth to glucose burning a little bit and then you know your fat adaption state where it's a little bit slower and you can go in between these pieces of a triangle but that tip of the triangle is really where you want to be and in that space just like what you said is having a little bit of those carbs you're back into ketosis the next day like it's not a problem at all and so the same is true for you don't have to be in a super super deep ketogenic space in order to burn fat like I've met some people that you know their ketones register like basically non-existent, but they're eating keto, they're feeling great, they're losing weight, they crave fat, they aren't interested in carbs, like all the all the signs are there. So it's interesting to play around with and just another, you know, phase to the approach. I mean, if you would have heard that back in June, you would have been like, no, you can't even handle that. But step by step as you're moving along and, you know, you're listening to your body now, your training is pretty like on point to where your body needs. And now it's like, what else can I play with? And that's really exciting that you keep digging. Yeah. And I just find it just, again, it's, I think it's, I'm just so intrigued with listening to my body Mm. and okay. So if I want blue blackberries, what's really the impact going to be on my ketones after I, I do them and, and they have hardly any impact at all. And so to me, that's fascinating. Whereas a sweet potato will, but they come right back. So it's just, yeah, I just getting to know, getting to know my body. And since I have never done that, it's, um, yeah, I like, I like the toy, but anyway, it's, um, I might, I might not use it as much as I thought I would. Mm. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what you have to say about the ketonics because I don't, actually know anyone who has the new version and I was hesitant to get one because they're quite expensive and my last experience with it was sort of like "Eh, I'm not sure this works but I've heard from others that it's like awesome so yeah you know and I do you know test my ketones by blood and Mm -hmm. then do the little breath ketonics and it seems like they're pretty close cool so as much as it can be. Yeah, exactly. Anything else that, um, I'm just trying to think of anything else that maybe perhaps we missed about your training or um, your fasting or carb ups or pre post workout meals. Is there anything that tips or strategies that you have to share with those listening? You know, I just feel like, you know, all of those signs that you have in your book, you know, about being fat adapted, those are really helpful. And and to me, kind of give me comfort or peace or or knowing that, okay, I am where I'm supposed to be and as being fat adapted. And then just, you know, enjoying, I think, what the activity I'm having that day and being willing to say, okay, I, I'm not feeling it today. I am going to dial it back a little bit or wow, I feel great today. I'm going to push it a little harder today. I am in having the freedom to do that, but yet still eat well. I, I just, I just am intrigued with this. I, I think it's, um, it's been so helpful to me. That's awesome. That makes my heart so happy. No. <laughs> That's so great. Knowing that, you know, you're, you've come a long way. Oh my gosh, your health and your state of mind and even your training program. And I'm, I'm excited to hear how your race goes this year. Yeah, me too. I, it's going to be in Steamboat Springs. It's going to be, I'm probably going to do an Olympic aqua bike. So it's a mile swim and then, you know, a 26 mile bike. So a, a little bit easier than what I've done in the past, but in a beautiful setting. And so anyway, I'm excited about that. Well, you'll have to let us know. I will really like to hear from you and see how that goes. I really appreciate you being on the show today, Tammy. It was so great to chat with you. I know that you have encouraged a lot of 
people out there to kind of look at their training schedules and maybe what they're eating and, and know that it's okay to, to listen to their bodies and that you can totally live through it and it'll be okay. Cause I know a lot of people are like, I don't know how this would be okay. So thank you so much for sharing your story. And, um, you mentioned a bunch of different books like low carb performance, low carb living, smart fat. So I'll include links to all of the awesome things that you mentioned in the show notes, which you can find at healthfulpursuit.com forward slash podcast forward slash E22. And thanks again for being on the show. Thank you, Leanne. And that does it for another episode of the Keto Diet Podcast. Thanks for listening in. You can follow me on Instagram by searching Healthful Pursuit, where you'll find daily keto eats and other fun things. And check out all of my keto supportive programs, bundles, guides, and other cool things over at healthfulpursuit.com forward slash shop. And I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.